you ever heard the phrase small children, small problems, big children, big problems? There are so many hurting parents out there. Now you could have a young child or a teenager or even adult child that it could be really, really hard right now. It could be drugs, alcohol, rebelliousness, too much dependency from the child on you. And it goes on and on and on. It could be sickness. It could be even cancer or you have lost a child and your heart hurts. And I'm sure you could fill in the blanks. There are so many different ones out there that you're saying, oh my goodness. You know, I've talked to many parents and almost every single family has a hurting parent in their family and they're hurting. Today, this message is for you. I am going to talk to you about three steps, three ways that could greatly help you, that could encourage you how to deal with your hurting heart. And the example we're going to use for that today is a woman that went through it all. If you look at her life, it was like a soap opera. She got pregnant out of wedlock. She was very young when she got married, 15, 16 years old. She never had the dream wedding that she wanted to have. Her family and her neighbors and the area she lived in looked down on her and said, how dare you do what you do and didn't believe her. They called her a liar by what she said was truth and they said it was not. She saw her son at the point when he got about 12 years old that she searched for him everywhere and couldn't find him for three days because he was missing and they weren't sure what had gone wrong because they had tried to kill his, her son before. She saw her son whipped and she saw her son even crucified. She saw it all. Can you even imagine the hurt that would have been in her heart? How did it all start? And what are the three steps that she took to be able to get through all that? Well, it started actually very differently than you ever would have thought. Because usually when children say, how is a baby being born? We would say something like the stork came down or, or we're talking about fish swimming or we come up with all kinds of stuff. But this was a little bit different than that. And where did it all start? Well, it actually started with God himself who shared in the book of Isaiah that there was going to be a baby that was going to be born from a virgin birth. Why don't we read it? And it says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. During the days of just the beginning of AD, there were all these people, all these young women that hoped they would be the one. They were going to be the mother of the Messiah. And then one day it actually happened because here is a woman that is just minding her own business about 15, 16 years old. And she had an unexpected visitor. Now, and usually you'd say there should be an appointment made, but this one just showed up. An angel stands in front of her and says, Behold, you are blessed among women. Don't be afraid. You are going to bear a child, and it's going to be the Son of God, and you will name him Jesus. This is Mary. Mary's name in Hebrew would mean Miriam, and but we're used to her by, by the Greek name, which is Mary. And here is Mary, and she must have been perplexed. She must have been afraid. And yet, right from the get-go, when she's about to become a mother, she does step number one that will help you and I to be able to help us with our hurting hearts. Because what she does is something we would have never even had thought of. She hears the angels, she hears the message, and she is perplexed. And it says in the book of Luke that Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. Isn't that amazing? Right now I'm saying to you, whatever situation you are in, nothing will be impossible with God. This is huge. 
This is absolutely huge. She is told she's going to have a baby, she's going to be a virgin, and, and, and that when this baby is going to be born, that it's all kind of going to be okay. And what the thought that probably went through her mind at that moment would be, what am I going to say to Joseph, the man I'm engaged to? How am I going to share this with the village? When this normally would happen, if they won't believe me, that means that they're going to stone me. And there should have been all these thoughts that were going through her head. But she answered, knowing, being aware of all the risks that this was going to take in an incredible way, because this is what she said. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. She did not say, my will be done. She did not say, as so many parents say, God, this is what I want to happen right now. This is the way it should be because I'm uncomfortable. But what she did say, your will be done. And I am going to submit to you. I am going to trust you. God, you take charge. That is the first step for you with your child right now. Are you able to say, I submit, I surrender, I trust, I believe in you. You see the bigger pictures, even if it looks like a disaster right now. Mary did. Mary is exactly what, that's exactly what she did. And God did not leave her hanging. He didn't just say, you're going to be pregnant and you're on your own. No, he said, I have a confirmation for you. And Mary sees what God is doing and she's thrilled about it. And he even gave her a confirmation. So she goes and visits her relative Elizabeth. And as she gets there, they greet each other. And what she does next is the second step that Mary does for those that have a hurting heart. She does something so often we don't even see. Because it says in the Bible, in Luke 1, starting at chapter 40, at verse 46, and it says, And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. Now, when she's saying that, she's not proud. That's not what she was saying, but she's saying, I accept the gift that God has given me. I am blessed. The Messiah is going to be born through me. I am blessed. And even if it's going to be hard, there are going to be lots of problems. I praise God. Have you said thank you to God for the child that God has given you? or the friend that he has given you? Have you said, God, it's tough right now, but thank you because you gave this as a gift to me. That's what Mary is saying. The second step is receive the gifts that God has given you. And if you really start looking every single day, it could be a gift to you, a flower that's blossoming in spring that looks like a bouquet out there, a child that he gave you and gave you responsibility to, it could be a rainbow in the sky that brings hope, or a sunset that makes a beautiful picture, or a kind word from somebody else. Something every day is what God is giving you. And he, he is asking you, receive my gifts in the midst of being hurt. I'll get you through. Mary did that. She doesn't know how it's going to work out with Joseph, her fiancé. It must have been hard. And yes, Joseph, when he found out, he must have been ticked. He must have been hurt, a hurting parent. He must have been frustrating. And yet God even provided. God took care of the problem. Because what you see next that is happening... It says in Matthew that God brought an angel in the angel and with the angel through a dream, he spoke to Joseph, don't leave her. Don't do this quietly. Trust me. Because he said, and Joseph awoke from the sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. And you're like, God worked it out. Do you see that? I get so excited to see, as I am a hurting parent right now, maybe as just you are, and there is so many problems and issues. And when I see what Joseph went through and Mary is going through, God's saying, I'm going to be there. I'm going to provide. I am going to take care of it. And here they are. They get married. 
and Joseph doesn't sleep with her, doesn't do any of that. He keeps her a virgin till she is done with the pregnancy. And then there is a census. And while she is about to be nine months pregnant, they have to travel 80 miles. Talking about a tough start for this couple. They travel 80 miles to Bethlehem. When they get there, there must be a hurting parent right there again. There is no place for them to give birth to this baby. They can't go to an inn. There is no hospital. There are no friends. I don't think there was any relatives or family around. And here they are, hurting parents, knowing they have the responsibility of giving birth to a gift, the Son of God Himself, and they can't find a place for Him. They end up in a stable. She gives birth. And eight days later, they name him Jesus, and he is circumcised. And you're like, wow, what a start. If we would look back at that today, I think they would make it all the way in Oprah or anywhere else, big talk show, because it would be so unusual. And there was so much hardship right from the get-go. And here she is. She gives birth. Normally, there would be relatives, there would be friends, there would be help. There would be musicians outside the doors playing the moment they knew it would be a boy that was born. Nothing. Wait, that's not quite true. Because there were shepherds in the field, and the musicians, the angels, were praising God in the field to the shepherds. And as the shepherds went to meet Jesus and they were going to see this baby that they were told was the Son of God, the Messiah, the long-awaited one. When they got there, something happened that is step number three is what Mary did that you and I should take to heart. Very important point here because it says, after the shepherds came to Mary and Joseph and saw baby Jesus in the manger, that they shared what they had seen. And at the end of that, when the visitation was over, it says, And all who heard it wondered at these things which were told by them, well, it told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. Step number three is that every God moment that you experience is treasured in your heart. Because if you do that, the moment you do that, that everything which will happen in the future, which could be so much harder, will be used to help you to get through the tough times, the hurting times, the complicated times. It is God that's going to help you, that's going to use those God moments to get you through. That's what happened with Mary. That's what happened with Joseph, the stepdad. Because we see here what happens next. But before we go there, before I'm going to tell you the tough things that are going to happen, we will be right back. I'm so excited to tell you about this wonderful study guide, Ransom. We are having the best Bible study here at Ukiah, California with my four friends and we are learning so much on how to love ourselves, how to be stronger for God, and all of the beautiful things that women truly are. And I just want to let you know that you should get it and we thank you for that wonderful gift, Barbara Marshall. Thanks so much for the opportunity to tell you about this study guide that has made such an impact in my life and those who are studying with me. Thank God for Barb Marshall who has written not only Ransom the book but the study guide and I just want to say thank you so much to Barb for combining women's issues, psychology, and a deep understanding of scripture. There's nothing she wouldn't be willing to research for this book. So thank you so much, Barb, for bringing this to be manifested in our lives. Thanks. You know that there is a plan for your life. Don't just sit back. Don't just let it just stay there. Do something. Make a difference. If you want to talk to me, to, to just really be encouraged about your mission and your vision for your plan in your life that you think God is leading you to, connect with me. We 
we've been talking about the three steps that you could do as a parent with a hurting heart or even any hurting heart that could be in your case right now. And we've talked about Mary that had it really tough. The first step we talked about was to surrender your heart to God's will and trust Him more, to submit to Him, to trust Him with your circumstances. Step two that we've been talking about is to receive the gifts He gives you, small and big. And the third one we just started talking about was to store the treasures that God gives you inside your heart. Every God moment, when you start taking that in your heart, that will help you, that will guide you, that will direct you. Because that's what Joseph, the stepdad, and that's what Mary, the mother of Jesus, needed. Because next at the eighth day, they had Jesus circumcised and they called him his name. And then when the purification process for Mary, which was 40 days for a boy, 80 for a girl, 40 days later was over, they traveled to Jerusalem. And while they were in Jerusalem, they did their sacrifice to the Lord and gave the gift back to God and received again the child from God to raise it and to do a good job. It was a ritual that would take place. And here they are and someone comes to him and his name is Simeon. And Simeon says something that would just pierce a heart. He sees it's the Messiah. He confirms they're the doing the right thing. And then he says this, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, for a sign to be opposed. And the sword will pierce even your own soul, he's saying to Mary, to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. He's sharing her, with her right now. You're going to be a hurting mom. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But guess what? This is a gift and trust God more. Next, it's amazing because just within a short time, maybe even or one or two years while they were still there, after the wise men had come by, what happens next is that King Herod wants to kill the baby and they have to flee to Egypt. Now they're running to protect this child, this little baby, this, this young, young child, maybe even a young toddler. They have to run for his life to a different country, through a desert. They're in a different culture. They have to start all over. And it is tough. It is not easy. They're there for several years. Then they go back home when King Herod dies. They go back to Nazareth. They're pointed and they're looked down on. Easy? Hurting hearts? Oh yeah. Big time. Jesus was a good kid. He did great, but then something happened when he was 12 years old. This is in the Hebrew custom that a child became a man, that the law was put upon him. They take him to the Passover. They travel to Jerusalem. And they celebrate the Passover and Jesus gets to be there. He was excited. He took it in. And some people believe that this is the moment he became aware he was the son of God himself. And here he is. And usually the mothers, the, the women would leave earlier and the father, because they traveled faster, would leave a little bit later the night. So Mary thought he was with Joseph and Joseph thought Jesus was with Mary. And as they leave and meet that evening, a little bit later, they both don't see Jesus and it freaks them out. They know he's been wanted before. They know people tried to kill him before. And here he is and they can't find him. At this point, they have other children. There are more siblings in the family. I wonder if they left them with the family as they hurry back to Jerusalem. Can you imagine the heart hurting heart? Has it been you that your child disappeared for several days? The anxiety, the frustration, the fear, and the not knowing. It all is there. It all takes place. And there they are, and they start to search for Jesus. Not one day, not two days, but three days. They find him between the religious leaders by the Sanhedrin. And as they find him and they connect with him, they start talking with him. And they say when they see him in Luke chapter 3, verse 48, when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, 
son, why have you treated us this way? Behold your father, and I have been anxious looking for you. And he said to, the, to them, why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand. Jesus knew who his father was. He knew where he had to be. And it says, but they did not understand the statement which he had made to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and he continued in subjection to them. And his mother, step number three again, and his mother treasured, treasured all these things in her heart. The God moments were held on to. Sometimes they're good and sometimes we don't understand. But he held us, she held on to them. And as they are here, at this point, Joseph seems not to be really mentioned anymore. We're not sure if he died or what happened. But Jesus comes back into the picture when he's about 30 years old. And his mother comes to him at a wedding and say, they're out of wine. They're out of wine. And, and she says, what can you do about it? And Jesus says, you know what? I'm not doing anything about this right now. My ministry has not started. My time has not begun. But Mary, the mom, says to the people at the wedding, do whatever he says. She knew her son. She knew Jesus. She knew he was the son of God. Then it must have been hard. Jesus wanted to. They tried to kill him. They tried to kill him several times. He was wanted. He had rebelliousness against him. His own town, Nazareth, rejected him. There were places that he dealt with a lot of opposition. After his first sermon, they wanted to kill him. It was tough. And as a mother, to watch that and to see all that must have been really, really hard. Must have been heart-wrenching when you knew the truth and the people would not accept it. And then there is something sad we see next. Because, because here is this hurting mom that we see at the foot of the cross after her son, the son of God, has been beaten, has been whipped, has blood, bruises, all that stuff. The man that is the savior of the world, the son of God. And she sees all that and she still, she still supports him because she goes to the foot of that cross and is there right for him. Can you imagine to see your child murdered like that? How could you even overcome such a pain? But something interesting happens while she's at that cross because here is God Almighty here is the Son of God that says, But standing by the cross in John 19, starting at verse 25, But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister. And then it says a little further down, When Jesus then saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. Jesus was God on the cross, the Son of God that was providing for Mary, the one that gave birth to him. Even at that moment, God took care of the need of the hurting heart. Do you get this? This is huge. God knows your hurting heart. Now, one thing that every woman, every man, every parent wants for their children is for all their children to know God, to get close to Him and to hear the calling. And even in the past, if, the, if Jesus, His stepbrothers, did not believe in God and did not want to draw close to Him and actually kind of rejected Him, something amazing happens after Jesus died and is resurrected and ascended to heaven later. Because it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, this. These all, with one mind, the disciples and more, were continually devoted themselves to prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. With his brothers. My dear friend, her prayers were answered. God answered every prayer for her. It wasn't easy. It was hard. 
She had a hurting heart. But when you, like Mary, learn to surrender, learn to trust and submit, step two, when you receive every gift from God, and when you take every God moment into your heart as a treasure, that is the moment that you will see that God's going to be for you there, even when it gets hard, like on the foot of the cross. Jesus died even for Mary as a son of God for the mistakes she had made to offer her eternal life as well and provide it. Jesus died for you. And he's saying, I know it's tough, I know it's hard, but I love you and I am going to change your life. Do you surrender to me? Do you receive my gift of eternal life? Do you believe? And do you save it? Do you store it in your heart as a treasure? That's you right now. I just want to say, pray to him right now. Why don't we say a prayer together? Dear Jesus, thank you for being the example. We're hurting parents. And I pray right now, receive us in your heart. Help us to surrender to accept your gift, and to store your God moments, the treasures in our hearts. Amen. If that was you right now, or if you have any questions, or you just want to say, Barb, can I share my story with you? I would love to talk with you. Go to barbtv.org or connect with us toll free, 855-836-1100. And just know you're not alone. God knows where you're at. Have a great day. I'm just so excited to be able to share with you that God has a plan for you. He wants you to love your life and to live it abundantly. And that's what my passion is for you. I want you to love your life, to enjoy your life, and to see the benefits that God has for you in mind. He doesn't just want to leave you where you're at, but He wants to make a difference. And that is what Love Your Life Ministries is all about, to help you grow and draw closer to God, for you to have a great life that totally focuses on what God wants for you. And guess what happens when you do? Your life will change, not for the worst, but for the better. It is going to be a blast.